Peru News Today, all you need to know about Peru. Carlos Augusto Olivenera, we want to simplify one or two regimes of income tax. The Minister of Economy and Finance, Carlos Augusto Olivenera, in conversation with this newspaper, said that the MEF will seek to increase the collection, combat informality and expand the tax base by simplifying the income tax regimes. With the economy growing despite the outbreak of trade war between the U.S. and China, the MEF will seek to increase revenue, combat informality and expand the tax base by simplifying the income tax regimes. The holder of the MEF does not rule out eliminating any exoneration, including refunds. Today they are all reviewed, Oliva said. All the economic indicators are being positive in these months. Formal employment, according to the latest data, grows to 4.5 percent in the private sector, domestic demand is growing both consumption and investment, so we are confident in this projection of 4 percent. In the first semester it grew 4.5 percent, which means that this semester will be below that figure, and all year we will reach 4 percent with a strong increase in domestic demand. However, it is pointed out that such growth is low for countries like Peru. What will they do to raise the potential GDP? It is definitely insufficient if we want to have an income from a developed country in the next 20 years, we need these rates to accelerate. We must remember that 4% is the rate that is growing in the world, up to a little less 3.8% or 3.9%. We need to accelerate this growth by making it sustainable and increase the competitiveness of the economy. For that we are developing a competitiveness policy that has several axes that imply different improvements in terms of productive diversification, terms of innovation, better infrastructure, logistics, simplification of barriers to the investment. We are aware that if we work directly and articulately on these issues any positive growth will be ephemeral. So the responsibility we have as a public administration is to work jointly and articulately, not only within the public sector, but also with actors from the private sector and academia, to improve the competitiveness of the economy, if we do not improve the competitiveness of the economy it will be difficult to sustain above 4% or 5%, which is what we need. It is said that public investment will be one of the supports of the GDP in 2018. What will boost it in the second semester? Public investment is projected to grow 14%, according to the Multiannual Macroeconomic Framework, MMM, and the figures to August are 13.8%. We are close to 14% and we hope that this second semester will begin to translate the large transfers that were made, especially for reconstruction of the El Nino phenomenon, several thousand transfers were made to regional and local governments, and also to some ministries and we hope that starting in September and at the end of the year, this growth can be propped up and this 14% growth in public investment can be achieved. However, according to the Macroeconomic Framework, MMM, there are key infrastructure projects that are delayed and some delayed until 2019. How to accelerate these processes? Each project has its own complexity and it is our responsibility to work on each issue to solve it. We support but there is a responsibility of the Ministry of Transport and Communications or regional governments of La Libertad or Air Equipa and we are working together with them on the best solutions for the country because they are projects that generate employment and infrastructure. The Fiscal Council warns that the MMM does not take the necessary provisions regarding the international context in the commercial war. Do you really consider that external swings will not have an impact on Peru's GDP? It always impacts, everything depends on how long the swings last and the depth of them. In the case of copper we have seen in the last two or three months a sharp fall in the price that affects our exports, but when we elaborate the MMM, the whole external part takes. What international analysts consider in some cases are the consensus that makes Bloomberg in some cases of IMF projections. In the case of the budget we have the assumption of 3.1% the pound of copper is now at 2.65%, if that price were maintained in the next year there would be an effect on public finances, but what the market expects is that there will be a rebound 
that is an initial response to this outbreak of commercial war, that there is because the demand for copper continues. Announce measures. Are they going to launch measures to boost the economy within the framework of delegation of powers in the coming days? Not directly with economic growth. Tomorrow, today, or the day after tomorrow, Sunday, will be published the legislative decree for the Fund Oak Creaser, which is a fund of 1 billion souls destined to promote credit and guarantees for small and micro enterprises, but most of the delegation of faculties are linked to the tax reform and also to the reform of administrative systems of the state, which are the systems on which the activity of the state moves. What is this security interest? A registry is being created in the SUNARP, and some rules to make it easier to make transparent, when there is an agreement between two parties, and some of them want to put as collateral some movable property for a loan or activity. It is a mechanism that serves to make relations more transparent when we want to put some furniture as a guarantee. We are expanding for a list in the legislative decree, and there will be this transparency and a record that Sunarp is working to know what goods are pledged or not. Tax reform. He announced that next October he will propose to Congress the elimination of certain tax exemptions. What are these measures about? In the case of tax exemptions we are doing the analysis of which are the exonerations, where there is no evidence that is being fulfilled with what the exoneration intends to do, and if it is found that it is not being met, we will ask the Congress to eliminate the exoneration. We are still in the evaluation stage, and we do not want to advance what they would be. We are going to announce it in October. Are you going to look at any of the ones that this office already proposed, as in the Amazon, casinos, universities? Those are the issues that are also being reviewed. The focus will be exonerations. There are some that are in the Constitution, and obviously they are much harder to work with. There are others that are in laws that can be changed. So, we are definitely reviewing all of them. The idea is to give a general review and earn some collection points especially in exonerations that are not fulfilling the purpose for which they were created. Is it possible the tax refunds are also reviewed? Will the MEF recommend extending the returns to the mining sector that expires this year? We are also reviewing that. We're reviewing everything, we're not saying this thing, I'm not going to touch it, except for food issues. Everything is being revised. This exemption, for example, aims to facilitate mining investment. In that case the evaluation is done if it is facilitated the mining investment, and if we see that it has fulfilled the objective because it is most likely to remain. If we see that the proposal has not favored it, it would be eliminated. But that is the technical analysis that is being done. At this time I cannot advance any results because we do not have it. Simplification of income tax regimes was also announced. How will this be done? We have four income tax regimes, and what is known is that the more regimes there are, the tax payment is somewhat complicated. Not only the growth of the companies is hindered, but the rules can be lent to avoid payment, but also complicate the life of companies because making the tax payment become more complex because they are new rules, and I have to hire an accountant a lawyer who helps pay every month. In order to simplify the system and not penalize growth, the ideal is to have few regimes, one or two and a proposal is being worked out to reduce from four to one or two to make it easier for companies to comply with taxes. Is the tax my regime eliminated? Exactly, that is what is on the table. We are evaluating, as I say the ideal is that we have a single regime, we could have different scales, but only one regime. That is what is on the table when we present the proposal, as I say we are going to go to one or two. What is on the table is to rationalize these regimes. What is sought with the strengthening of the property tax? Will this tax rise? In the case of the property tax, which is the most important for municipalities, we are also reviewing the casistry. There is little revenue that is 0.3% of the GDP and has a high space to continue growing and not necessarily increasing the rate but making adjustments to the regulation that the property tax has. 
issues that have to do with proper zoning, there are cities that date from 50 to 60 years, the characteristics that the properties must have to pay the tax, now it is said that only the finished properties must pay the tax then by the way a house is left to 95% and since it does not reach 100%, they do not pay the tax. These things we are reviewing and seeing, how to propose proposals to increase that revenue that is important and should be the main source of income for local governments without affecting the rates. What is the approach to expand the tax base this year? If I had to summarize the most powerful measure to expand the tax base, it has to do with the massification of electronic receipts. We are working together with SUNIT so that all invoices, tickets, all fee receipts are electronic which means that you will have the record of all these operations in real time. We have advanced with the receipts for fees that now all have to be electronic. Now we are going in the second step to the invoices of the companies and the challenge that we have in the next years is to incorporate all the small, medium companies. Once we have this massified towards 2020 to 2021, it will be almost impossible to evade or evade the payment of taxes and that in what translates into an expansion of the tax base. Regarding the judicialization of the payment of taxes, the creation of a special commission charged with collecting large debts was announced. What progress is there? We are working internally in what corresponds to the executive power and the national government. Everything that has to do with SUNIT and the tax court we are reviewing to simplify the procedures beyond internal reforms that will be raised in the tax court as the expansion of a room so that not everything can be seen faster. What corresponds to the central government is working together with the tax court. There is another group of problems that are generated outside of the executive power that they have to see when these controversies are judicialized, there if we have to respect the judicial jurisdiction, we cannot interfere or try to influence the judicial power that are completely autonomous. The responsibility of the executive power is to work on this first part that has to do with the SUNIT and the tax court. That is, could not a collection period for these large debts be established? As I say, if they are judicialized for us as executive power we cannot tell the judicial branch you have a deadline to fail in this or that project or demand that is irrelevant. They are autonomous, in any case the judicial reform that is being raised at the moment and that apparently would have the support of the Congress should help to solve that other part of the problem that we are mentioning. Proposal that facilitates payment to retirees of the ONP, we have the information that the ONP will be payable to 50% of the total number of cases prosecuted for the collection of pensions. Is that the way to solve the high degree of judicialization of pensions that the ONP does not pay? The deadline was for the ONP to submit a proposal that was met on the indicated date and, since then we are reviewing how that proposal is translated. What has been raised is a bill that is being reviewed by the Council of Ministers, a presentation was made two weeks ago. The ministers made a series of comments and recommendations, and in the next Council of Ministers, Wednesday, September 12, we will be raising again with all the contributions made by the ministers. This bill will be sent to Congress. It is what we can advance so far, we cannot delve into details. We want to simplify one or two regimes of income tax. In figures minus 7.5% contracted the collection of the new Simplified Unified Regime, NRUS, in July 2018. This scheme is created for small traders and producers with revenues of up to S96,000 per year or S8,000 per month. Minus 14.6% in July the number of taxpayers registered in the general income tax regime was reduced. It does not have a limit number of income as well as purchases. 78% increased the collection of the MIP tributary regime, RMT, in July 2018 compared to July 2017. This regime applies since January 2017 and is aimed at taxpayers whose net income does not exceed 1,700 UIT. In the fiscal year, projected or from the previous fiscal year, 9.3%. Visit at www.perunastoday.com. Also follow on Facebook and Twitter.